and welcome to Herbal Meadows, your all things RC and uh, craft uh, related. Uh, today we're going to be doing part four on the tea beacon series. Uh, we're coming to the end uh, on this series here. Uh, I wanted to uh, complete the project uh, so that people see the, the whole picture uh, and to see how effective this, this tool is. Uh, if you haven't seen the first three videos, I highly recommend you go back and take a look at one, two, and three to get an idea of what the tea beacon is. It's it's a uh, lost object finder. I'm using it for finding lost planes and quads when I fly FPV. Uh, you know that I also use another locator called the locator uh, for short range areas, but the uh, T-Beacon is used for longer range uh, since it will find, uh, uh, find your craft or lost object uh, over several kilometers. So again, uh, a, a great little product. Uh, it also uh, requires that uh, you use a uh, walkie-talkie. This is, this is how it's going to find things. Um, and uh, the T-Beacon broadcasts to the uh, walkie-talkie. We also talked about the different ways in which you can locate it. Uh, it gives you a numerical output in which you could just keep following the highest number. And that will kind of lead you generally to where uh, your craft is down. Uh, it's, um, I would say that's more of a a directional item, it'll get you close and with the beeper um, and the light you should be able to locate it pretty good. However, if if your uh, quad or plane has, has gone for several kilometers, it's a lot harder. So when we do the installs, primarily I'm focusing my installs into a craft that has a GPS in it so that we can use our uh, walkie-talkie to actually get the coordinates of uh, where it is uh, downed and go there uh, more directly. I found from my test that it's, it, it locates it within feet. So um, uh, it, it's a pretty, pretty impressive tool that way. However, you don't want to be fiddling around with this product every time you want to fly a craft. Now, I'm not going to be putting this in everything, but I do have an FPV plane and I have a couple of FPV quads and another uh, object, another uh, unit that I'll be putting it in, uh, and I'm going to put in permanent wiring, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, it comes with uh, a couple of cables, and I've been in touch with the manufacturer uh, to arrange um, uh, uh, more cables so that uh, so that people can so that people can um, arrange for more of these cables to come. Uh, with the product so that you can install this cable into your craft. This is handy uh, because this is what's going to connect to your GPS uh, and it's also, I have it connected to the power. Um, it has its own battery on the T-Beacon but this will actually uh, charge uh, when you use the power, uh, the 5 volt power here, this will actually charge the battery uh, therefore giving you longer, longer, longer times uh, to discover your uh, product, you know, your lost plane or quad. Now, uh, I believe, uh, if I, you have to look, check the manual, but I believe this will stay alive for uh, several days, uh, maybe even a week, uh, with the small battery that's in there already. So uh, not, a lot of, uh, not a lot of chance of, uh, of the battery going dead right away. The reason why I, I believe in, in doing the wiring uh, permanently in the craft and with the GPS is that uh, what I recommend is that you plug, once you have this in your craft, and you'll see it when we do the installation, you physically plug the T-beacon into the plug that will be sticking out and then tuck it into the craft, and then, then put in your battery. What that will do, it will automatically turn on your T-beacon for you. Um, now when you disconnect it, it won't power it off, but that's an important thing, because a lot of times when you're flying, this may become dislodged, the battery may become uh, dislodged from the craft and there'll be no more power. You want this to stay on. So this will stay on using its internal battery. However, while you're in flight, it will be charging uh, using this cable. So that's kind of the reason why I want to be installing these cables in uh, all the crafts that I'm going to be using the T-Beacon on. So let's get started by taking a closer look. I'm going to be installing the T-Beacon on the, uh, on the uh, QNAM uh, uh, Nova for the Cheerson CX-20 and what I did is, is I'll have a there'll be a, pi a little picture uh, of what the pinout is for this GPS 
the 0061 that came with this uh, QNAM Nova. Uh, the, the pinout will tell you what your, your power, your 5 volt power, your block for your ground, as well as your TX and your RX. That's important because that's what you're, you're going to need to know your uh, TX from your GPS. You're not going to need to change any of the cables for the power because the, uh, the GPS is already receiving its power from the flight controller and that is the black and the red. What you're going to need to do is find out which is the transmit uh, cable for your GPS unit. For this one here, it's the blue cable. This is the, uh, this is the transmit cable for uh, this uh, GPS unit. Now, uh, I've confirmed that by a, a pinout uh, map, and it's also marked right on the GPS unit, which gives me a quite, quite, deal, quite, a, quite a bit of uh, confidence that we're in the right zone. So now that I know what the, the TX cable is for uh, this GPS, remembering from the previous video, the TX from my GPS is going to go to the RX on my uh, T beacon. Okay, so it's not TX to TX. It's going to be TX to RX. Transmit to receive. And my receive color on my T beacon is green. Uh, the cables may change over time, but for now it is green. That is the RX on the T beacon. So confirm with your, with your chart uh, which one of these is the uh, receive and that's the one you want to connect it to. In my case, it's a green cable. What I did is I took the transmit cable from the GPS and I snipped it. Just cut it and I then <clears throat> I then spliced on a, a connector cable that I then connected up to the, RX, uh, the uh, RX cable on my T beacon. So that's how I did that. I actually put in a little connector here and this is the uh, transmit coming from the GPS going to the receive cable on the T-beacon so that when I plug this in it'll be all set to go. What I also did, and this will depend on the craft you're installing it with, so you have to be careful, I have a 5 volt power that I have, I took from my uh, from my flight controller uh, which is right here next to where my where my uh, transmitter goes for my uh, for my radio. So the black is on the top and the red is right beneath it and I'm using that to provide power to my T beacon uh, so that I'm always charging the T beacon while we're while we're in flight. So uh, it's very convenient. You can take this off any UBEC. You can take this off any uh, uh, receiver. Uh, that you have in your craft as long as you have an open port and you then plug in the black to ground and the red to uh, power that's going to give you the 5 volts to power on your T-beacon. So that's it. That's as simple as it gets is I have the power coming off the, uh, the uh, radio connections to the uh, flight controller and I cut the wire for the uh, GPS okay which is the blue wire in this case but that's going to change, but it's the transmit from the uh, from the GPS, and I spliced in a cable which is now connected to the RX on my T beacon, which is part of this finished cable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put all the cables back nicely, fasten everything down nicely, and then I'm going to show you how I connect this to the T beacon and give you. We're back. Uh, we've now put the uh, uh, the case back on. Uh, the uh, QNAM Nova. Let me just turn this T-beacon off. I was just doing a test. It's off. So now I have the case back on the uh, QNAM Nova. Plug in my compass. Okay. Uh, now that I have my case on. Now we're ready to uh, make sure that the uh, T-beacon is working properly. Uh, now we have our cable coming out to the battery compartment. That's the T-beacon cable all wired into the GPS as well as obtaining voltage uh, off the uh, 5 volt power off the uh, flight controller. Again, the T-Beacon has a battery so you don't need it. However, when you do apply the 5 volt power uh, to, the, uh, to the two uh, voltage lines uh, on this unit, it will give you, um, it will recharge the battery so it will extend your time so that when you do crash, 
uh, your, uh, your uh, time of uh, running out of battery will be whenever you crash. I don't know if that makes sense, but yes. Uh, so this is it. Uh, we now have that cable in there. Uh, now before we plug in our battery uh, and uh, move on to uh, the, the flight, I recommend that you plug in the T beacon first. And I will explain that in one sec. So I'm plugging in my T beacon. Plugging in my T beacon. And I'm going to tuck it away inside the case. Every craft is different, but you'll always have room to, to tuck things away. Then I'm going to put in my flight battery. Tuck that in there. And now before I plug in the, uh, the battery, I'm going to turn on my walkie-talkie, which is the Baofeng UV5R. Now I'm going to plug in my battery, <coughs> my flight battery. So now, the reason I want to do that is I've got a 4-1. That's the voltage on my battery on the T-beacon. Confirms two things. A, the battery, the T-beacon's functioning because it's plugged in. And I have a voltage uh, to, uh, for this flight. Now, when you're done the flight and you remove the T-beacon, you'll have to turn it off manually. That's not a bad thing because a lot of times when you're crashing, your battery is going to fly away. And you don't want the T-beacon going turning off on you. Uh, because there's no uh, main batteries, uh, no battery connection. So uh, it's a good thing. Uh, so you have to turn the T-beacon off every time you remove it from the craft. So now that I know it's on, um, I just simply plug in my, uh, close my door and enjoy my flight. Um, I highly recommend the uh, T-beacon. Uh, at some point, you're going to, if you're serious about the, the, the hobby, at some point you're going to be losing a craft. Um, and you want to be able to locate it as easily as possible. Um, and it's, it's very frustrating. And some of this equipment is very, very expensive. So um, this is a cheap investment, uh, and I call it my insurance policy um, for, uh, for, for when I fly. I'll be putting this on every FPV uh, product that I have. Now with my cable, all I have to do is install a cable on all my crafts and then plug in a T-beacon uh, as I move from uh, craft to craft. Many times I'll be flying two to three different crafts in FPV and it's certainly a lot more economical to have one T-beacon and just cycle it through the, through the different crafts. So I hope you enjoyed this series on the T-beacon and uh, if you did please say like and if you want to see more videos on this topic please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day and see you next time at Emerald Meadows. Bye bye.